Hello there everyone, uh, this is I am Mark 3 and welcome back to the giant Stompy Stompy Robot Simulator. By which I mean MechWarrior Online. Mmm, yes. This weekend we are taking a slight break from the current run which is refitting and outfitting all of my hero mechs. Mainly because, well, well two reasons. First off, Delta was asking in the stream a couple of days ago about, mm, you know, why, well, actually, what's my favorite PPC carrier and PPCs, 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 PPCs. So I figured, you know what, I accidentally scrapped this design a while back, but I still remembered how to do it. So for today's walk, we have got one of my non-hero annihilators out. This is the Oculus. So dubbed and named because of last time I brought it out the shed, which has got to be somewhere around Christmas time, I think. So it has been quite a while since this one turned up. And to date, this is the heaviest and most powerful PPC carrier I have put together in this particular game. For the exact version number, this is the ANH-1P variant. And as you can see from the shiny things, it carries a total of five PPCs. Which is an unusually high amount of PPCs. I think uh, the ones that go higher than this are generally super specialists. And it's normally like clusters of three PPCs in each arm and nonsense like that. I don't have any mechs that can do that. So this is my best and most powerful attempt at it. And it's not a bad one. You may also have noticed, by the way, because of the update last week, we now have free camera in the mech bay, so that is a long overdue addition, I think. I wasn't hoping for it, I hadn't even thought of it, and then they added it, and in general I'm very happy with it, because it lets you view the mech from a lot more interesting angles. It's only will be more interesting for me to make thumbnails for this game from that one, <laughs> so let's put it that way. So I'll use the um, mech bay as my thumbnails. Right, anyway, let's go ahead and drop into the mech bay to look at the configuration, and then we can get started stomping all over things. Okay, as you can see, this mech is rather focused on dealing with its waste heat buildup, because that is actually quite considerable. But let us focus, focus, focus. In terms of general design, this particular mech operates on a standard chassis with standard armor. So, low, low tech. It also features a standard engine, which is of the 300 variety, giving us a full speed of 48.6. So, absolutely sprinting along by Annihilator standards. It's not that bad, really. Especially for something so heavily armoured. However, one glimmer of advanced technology is double heat sinks. This mech has double heatsink technology, of course, and it's got a total of 12 added heatsinks scattered all over the mech, which in turn gives it a total cooling rating of 1.23, which is actually fairly decent. The problem is that PPCs tend to give a massive burst of heat, so it can actually overload pretty easily even with that, but at least it can cool off at a, a reasonable time frame. Yes. In terms of backup systems, all we've got is an AMS and a ton and a half of AMS ammunition. This is different from how it was previously, because last time we saw this thing, it had a pair of light machine guns in the arms and ammunition for that. So this one's got a slightly more defensive style to its loadouts, rather than the slightly more offensive version, which was featured previously. Not that that's anything to worry about, really. I mean, it's a pair of light machine guns that weren't really doing much, and often, I recall, I was forgetting to even fire the things. So, there you go. Hmm. And then, lastly, we have the primary weapon systems, which is a quintet arrangement of Snubnose PPCs. Uh, yes, they are Snubnose, but we got five of the darn things. And they are set up to a chain of fire like um, absolute buggers. So, if it, as soon, the idea of this is, as soon as an enemy gets out in front of you, it's like, ooh, hello, enemy. PPC, 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 
PPC, PPC, PPC. Just, just keeps smacking them with rapid fire PPC shots for as long as the mech's um, long suffering heat systems can allow. <laughs> it's, it makes a lasting impression. Because every time the PPC connects, it's like 10 points of damage immediately, and there's another PPC bolt right behind it. So, think of this mech like a walking subnose PPC chain gun or Gatling cannon style thing. Rapid fire PPCs for everyone. Now, of course, this loadout does have some drawbacks, but I'll be going into my thoughts and choices when we get into the actual match itself. So. Roll on and match number one. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. This is command. Eliminate all enemies, no matter the cost. Okay, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to River City. Oh, hello, fellow... Oh, fellow Fafnir? <laughs> I've been playing the Fafnir too much of late. Welcome to River City. The game mode is... Skirmish. So, kill the enemy and they will try to give you pretty flowers and presents in return. Usually of the high explosive variety. I did not quite catch that, unfortunately. My volume was a little bit too low, so I'm turning my volume up a little. Right. Okay. Now then, I mentioned I had a little bit of a ramble. Why am I fielding this old design and more or less it's stock? Well, stock for me at least. Because this is one of the designs that I've decided, you know what? This is, this is a design I'm very happy with and I want to keep it. The fact it got dismantled for parts was entirely an accident, and so there was not much to be done about it, unfortunately. Our assault seems to be swinging left, so I guess I should do the same. But I've decided to put this one back together and, f and field it this weekend, because I was thinking about what Delta was speaking about in the stream, as in, you know, PPC carriers and all that jazz. And I, of course, immediately recalled this one because, you know, massive PPC carrier. And I was poking around with the Fafnirs. I actually put together a quad heavy PPC, Fafnir. And I was seeing if I could make it work. And I could, kind of. It actually kind of worked. It was, um... Prime Weapons was four heavy PPCs. And then it's in backup weaponry, it had a pair of heavy machine guns, so, you know. The problem is, it was so heavily focused on the heavy PPCs that it had no close range kick at all. As in, if you get within 90 meters. This is the problem with um, specializing in regular and ER PPC variants too much. You create a super specialist, which actually becomes pretty much helpless at um, sub 90 meter ranges because flat out the enemy can just step a little bit too close to you and then your weaponry doesn't do any damage whatsoever and the heavy PPCs are no exception to that so yeah honestly I've never really seen this tactic done too much on this map hmm. kind of thinking maybe I should drop down the ramp yeah, let's, let's go down here. Bonk. Oh no, my legs are damaged. Well, to be fair, I'm a massively heavy mech that just dropped down. Target spotted. And I want I want the cover, so, you know, that's why I'm down here. And I, I think I've got a, a, a fellow assault following me in. So I've got an assault buddy, because one of my lance mates is right behind me. Nope, no sign of the enemy. Let us continue forwards. So yes... The um, heavy PPCs were stripped out. I mean, originally, this version was um, trying with ER PPCs and standard PPCs, and then I went snubnose because of the fact that PPC carriers are so vulnerable once you get inside minimum range. So that's why this particular mech became a snub PPC mech, just so that it could applied. keep on keep on biting really, really hard anyone that decided to try and get too close to it. With the trade-off being that it's not got as much maximum range as any other PPC type. It's just um, the nature of the snub. Target 
Because I see you over there. Ah, the Fafnir is sticking with me. Okay. I better stick close to that Fafnir then, because it's an ECM Fafnir. Let's see if I can catch up with that Mauler, actually. Yep, he did not like that. At all. See, see what I mean about the sheer nonsense this thing does? It's like, the enemy looks at me, they decide to start firing, and then suddenly it's like, massive return fire. It's like, it doesn't matter too much if I actually miss with a PPC shot, I just fire so many of the things. And then it's like, ah, incoming massive bolts of energy, perhaps I'd better watch out and maybe not be here anymore. So the fear factor is pretty strong with this one. I'm actually firing a little bit too fast, because if I slow my rate of fire slightly, then I wouldn't be running into cooldown issues, but if I just hold down the firing key, I don't think it does at maximum potential on the fire rate. So let's give that a shot, actually, uh, as soon as I find a, someone to test my weapons on. That would be kind of nice. My fellow assaults are over this side. No sign of targets. Sign of targets. Target, target, target. Oh, no. Targets! Yeah. It's, actually, it does maximum back, but target it then target. slows down a little bit. Do you regret stepping out there now, Mr. Line? Oh no, incoming! Too bad I've got an AMS system installed. <laughs> I'm doing a very good job of f making the enemy just duck and cover. It's, it's a fear factor, this this particular mech. It's the, it's the shock and awe value as much as anything else. New target acquired. Though it does overload a little bit sometimes. It's very good at forcing the enemy back into, into retreat. Acquired. Enemy rifleman, let's see. Can I... Hello, fellow Annihilator. Dead Annihilator. Okay, yep. I'm fighting at capacity, so I do need to cool off slightly. Mm. That's the other problem, by the way. Paired heavy PPCs were just overloading the, the uh, Fafnir I was trying them out on so badly. Even the snub nose with them, um, because they're smaller, they can fit more cool heat cooling on it, so better, more heat sinks. It's doing what I said, which is just flat-out bursts of heat is causing Target issues. Destroyed. Okay, you're dead as well. I can't actually fit under this bridge, so that's the thing. But it looks like we've got a total rout on our hands now. The Fafnir's going to show off, I think, and just walk onto this bridge. I don't think I can follow. Oh, no, it gets a little bit deeper here. I think I can follow. Uh, oh, that's really close, that. Okay. Target acquired. Oh, there's an Ebon Jaguar. I think I clipped him earlier. Yeah, I think he was the guy that just dropped down at the back before. New oh, there's a health acquired. spawn over there as well. Okay, both enemies are over there. I will need to use that ramp to get up there. Because I don't think I can scale the hill. Target spotted. You just have to try and catch up with them. Oh, that, uh, that health spawn's about to die. Target destroyed. Yes. Okay, that went pretty well, actually. Let's see what the stats were for this. I am mildly curious. As long as you don't keep the trigger down, though, this is a very reliable damage dealer. But it's finding the enemy more than anything else. I've noticed with PPCs that I tend to do less damage dealt. Though I did get six assists and a kill most damage dealt, which I think was on one of those riflemen. So overall, a fairly solid performance, uh, but my main value really is the fact that I'm not a mech the enemy wants to stick around and try to duke it out with because I'm just keep on I'll just keep on smacking them with PPC shots. <laughs> so yeah, this mech does tend to make people back up and hesitate to face it, which is half the value sometimes. Anyway, let us roll on to match number two.
Reactor online. Sensors online. Time to kick ass. Weapons online. All systems normal. But I am all out of bubblegum, good sir. This is command. Eliminate all enemies, no matter the cost. Eliminate all enemies, no matter the cost. We've got some talkers. All enemies. Mm. Okay, welcome to Crimson Straits, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, what? Oh, slit some. Oh. <laughs> Took me a moment to realize what was said because I was talking at the same time. Okay. Yes, welcome to Crimson Strait. The game mode is once again skirmish. Kill the enemy. Lost someone. We've got a Banshee, I think that's the hero Banshee. We've got an Annihilator, fellow Annihilator in orange. One E, looks like he's got lasers and things, okay. So yeah, we have got a fellow Annihilator with us and I think I'll be using him as my buddy slash meat shield slash whatever. Because there is one, well, there's a couple of drawbacks to this design. First off, uh, well, it runs really hot, as you noticed last time. I'm not. I'm kind of trying to work out what to say because normally I'd use the second match in a two-match video to say what I think of the build, general impressions, that kind of thing. But we already have a general impressions, and I was kind of covering those in the previous one as well. So yes, this mech runs pretty hot. It needs to slow down and cool off on a regular basis because of its sheer am amount of PPC nonsense that it can dish out. It's also... Um, hey, let's back up. Well, honestly, it would probably be better on a different chassis, to be quite honest. Because there is a little bit of extra weight in here, which could have been used for a bit of extra speed if we weren't on an Annihilator. Let's switch to heat mode. Just to see. So yes, there is that. It's got a few drawbacks to it. I might be needing to do um, just peek out and peek and shoot tactics. <clears throat> In which case, I do actually have weapon groups configured yeah, for that. Where, where, where's the enemy? Target spotted. What is that? Lucas. Where is the enemy? We seem to have a, a severe deficiency of targets. Hmm. We've got an entire war group walking here, but we've not actually encountered the enemy forces, <laughs> which is a little bit unusual at this stage. They must either be either they're over the saddle or they are on top. No, there was an enemy contact over in C as well. Uh, he's slowly working my way up the hill. Okay, it looks like the enemy team went over the saddle. Which mm, is a bit of an issue because now we're playing NASCAR style and we've got big slow max. Target acquired. Oh, and they, the scouts has just found. New target acquired. Yeah, looks like they've all gone that way. Yeah, the scout has just. We have some behind us. The they come from behind. Yeah, they are definitely NASCARing at this point. I shouldn't have climbed that hill, I should have just... Rotate around and kill any stragglers. Well, the problem is I'm already at the saddle. Oh, part, part of the problem is I'm just trying to find things. But my mech is slow. It is slow. It is smooth, slow, well, fashionably late, and recent. very heavily on humped and armors. So, basically, a, a typical annihilator at this point. New uh, yep, okay. Nova Cap. Okay, we're finding other enemies around the place. I can't really engage at this range because I may not be um, quite the super specialist in terms of um, PPC usage because, you know, snubs. But I am still very heavily specialised, as in I'm um, a short to mid range only. Yes, 
Once I see you there. Just I think we're, we're getting a bit rushed over here. I need to get find some cover because I am a bit too exposed. Annihilators can't last when thoroughly exposed like that. But, oh, I believe I see UAX being deployed. Target destroyed. <laughs> oh, I'm you regret peeking out like, at that like me with Mr. Hunchback. I can keep this up. Can you? Up we get. But yeah, they were ha they were not very willing to keep engaging me. That hunchback was actually pretty daring, and I, I tagged him with a bunch of PPC shots for his arrogance, for daring to face down my precious annihilator. No. Oh. That Fafnir just got tagged a bit. I think by most of a full volley, actually. So yeah. I am definitely working. And this kind of uh, more close-in, brawling style Target fighting. Acquired. Admittedly, it's not a brawl. I'm playing a support style overall. Need assistance. Hmm. Need to watch me. Oh, I think an ally caught that one. I actually need double clicks. Okay. We're experiencing some losses. Don't get sloppy good. out there. Good. This is going good. All fear us. They fear us. They're actually taking pretty heavy casualties. We caught their stragglers faster than they caught up with us. Yeah, I think I'll just use holding left click from now on because I do believe that's the remains of Yep, that's an enemy enemy annihilator. Aha. Wait, no, that's the Fafnir. The Fafnir is dead. Long live the Fafnir. Yeah, I think I'll just hold down the firing key. It'll just be... It'll be safer because I often keep double firing so it's like um, accidentally more heat. Oh, I think I blew out a leg or something. Yeah, we've got this. Main enemy elements have already been wrecked. Oh, he went down fast. He had an XL engine. I, th I believe that leaves the enemy scouts. Hmm. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Good, job, Good game, everyone. Okay. So yeah, there, there are a few finer points to pass in this thing, but once we actually got into a big team fight, this mech was really starting to dish out the damage. So. The more targets there are, the more dangerous this mech becomes, basically. If there's only a few targets, I kind of struggle to maneuver, but if there's plenty of targets, I can just unload, basically. 361 damage, 8 kill assists. No outright kills, because I'm not doing that high burst damage. I wasn't even firing the um, double links PPCs at all. But I was chain firing and doing nasty things to their armor. <laughs> so, yes, this is kind of like my usual mechs. They operate better in team formation. Flat out. By myself, I'm not that good. With a team, I can actually be dangerous sometimes. And this mech kind of reflects that. It's I recall this is one of the reasons why I liked it so much. But yeah, this has been Iron Mark 3, walking around with five Snubnose PPCs. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. And I will catch you all some other time. Maybe on the Discord, which is a thing, and I'm trying to... I make a conscious effort to try to point that out to people. If you're interested in the Discord and the social media blah blah blah, blah thingy, then there is a link in the description below the video. Feel free to come and join some fellow gamers for just casual chat or just hanging out, or maybe organizing a game or two. Anything goes, really. But just beware, it is mildly insane there sometimes, because, you know, we're all a bit bonkers. But hey, who isn't? It's part of the fun. We're nice people. But yeah, catch you all later. <laughs>